Welcome back to Red Card. I'm your host, Anthony Toter, and joining us right now from the city of brotherly love from the Philadelphia Union, Maurice Sedu. Maurice, welcome. Thank you, man. How you doing? Hi, couldn't be better. Just a little bit of static there, but let's hope we can get through this. Really appreciate you taking the time, Maurice. Let's talk about that opening game against the Colorado Rapids. A chippy matchup and a cold day, and you expected that from the Rapids that they were going to bring it to you. Give me your thoughts on that game on the weekend. Yes, um, the opening game is always important. You want to start the season on the right foot, and more more times than not, you want to start off with a victory. Um, unfortunately for us, we, we got a draw, but you know, in saying that, I still thought we played well, dominated large stretches of that game, and um, you know, I think when they got the red card, that actually made it a little bit more difficult for us because they kind of just sat in with, and just kept dodging on the ball, so it was difficult for us to break down, but overall, you know, pleased with the, to take a point from that game, and now we're just looking forward to this weekend. Maurice, let's talk about your lineup. It is a new uh, a lineup uh, with a lot of players that have come from winning organizations. Let's talk about the Canadian Stephen Vittoria, who was on our show a couple weeks ago, shoring up that back end with Ray Gaddis. Then CJ Sapong, the youngster uh, coming from Sporting Kansas City that's going to bring a lot of different dynamics to your lineup. How confident are you with these new additions to your team that you could possibly go a long way this year? Yeah, I'm very confident. You know, it's obviously... It's important that early on in the season we get them to make sure that they're they're all on the same page with what we're trying to do this season and, and just make them feel comfortable off the pitch so that on the pitch they can produce as, as quickly as possible and, and play as freely as they need to so they can show their best. But, you know, so far I think they've done well. Preseason went well for all three of them. They've played into the team pretty well. And just now it's a matter of um, just being consistent throughout the course of the season and getting, that, getting into the playoffs. Maurice, let's talk about... MLS in 2015, how it's changed in leaps and bounds since you first entered the league with TFC, a former TFC player as you were in many different cities now uh, before you left. In Orlando, uh, we see that they had so much success in their first game, a second franchise in New York. Portland and Seattle are great atmospheres to uh, visit and play in. Talk about how great it is to see this league grow uh, so quickly and so positively. Yeah, it's unbelievable to be honest. Because I mean, I can remember when I first came into the league and to see where it, where it is now. It's the growth is tremendous. I and mean, even when I was abroad, I was still keeping tabs on what was going on back here. Because you know, this is my home country, and I've always had plans to come back here and, and play soccer once again in, in MLS. So to see the expansion teams coming in, the, the soccer specific stadium teams built across the country, the academy system being instilled, and, and the level of play always getting better and better. You know, and that's due to young players we have coming in, the homegrown players making an impact in their, in their respective teams, and then obviously the foreign players coming come in, uh, over to MLS and adding quality from, um, from Europe and from, you know, from South America as well and Central America. So I think where the league is now, it's, it's unbelievable and it's an exciting time to be back here in MLS, and, you know, I think the progress is just going to continue. You know, there's, I think the, the infrastructure is there and the resources we have available to us are, are unbelievable. So where this league can go is um, it, I think at the end of the day, what we're all trying to do is make us one of the best leagues in the world, and I think we have the resources to do that. Maurice, just uh, having you on the line, a little bit of difficulty, a little static there, but hopefully you can hear our next question. You came from the NCAA, University of Maryland, uh, a friend of mine who you know quite well, Coach Sasha Sorowski, another proud Canadian, helped develop so many guys like yourself to go on to success in MLS, Team USA. How great uh, was it playing for Coach Sasha Sorowski and University of Maryland? Yeah, playing for Sasha was unbelievable. Um, when I was making my decision, I think, he played a key role in convincing me to come to Maryland. Uh, his passion for the game, his vision for what he wanted to do with the program there at Maryland. Uh, all those things I was very, very impressed by, and, and I felt very, very much like I wanted to be a part of that and be a part of something special. So my time there, I felt I grew not only as a player, but as a person, and it prepared me for the next phase of my career, which was to be a professional, to be away from home and, and be able to deal with different hardships and difficulties and um, I thought he, he helped build me as a player and build character as well. Maurice, I want you to talk to the young players out there, the young boys and girls all over North America. You mentioned difficulties. I'm a parent of two boys myself, and I got to tell you, I have no time at all in the game I love so much when it comes to racism in the game, especially uh, in Europe. There's all sorts of problems still, whether it's Russia, whether it's in Italy, you name it. Uh, it just really offends me and gets me upset because all I want to watch is the game. I could care less. 
about the nationality, the color of your skin. I want to see how you can play the game. When the youngsters are going through this, what advice would you like to give them to help them through things like this? It's difficult. You know, there's no, uh, there's no easy answer or, or, you know, just straightforward answer. You would just hope that, you know, they can lean on their teammates, lean on their clubs to really support them and hope that, you know, the, that FIFA is making is going to do something to, to try to prevent this. And obviously, it's still going on to this day, which is unbelievable and, and disgusting, to be honest. But you got to just try to believe in the system that things will change eventually and that as uh, the punishments become stricter and more harsh, that that will limit the, the, the minority of idiots that are still out there making these gestures and making these comments and trying to really tarnish the game that we all love and, and love, to take, love taking part in. I mean, you're absolutely bang on, Maurice. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Mario Balotelli. Unfortunately, he's had some issues where he just hasn't had it uh, on for his uh, career in club or country. But when he's on, he is top five for me in the world in his position. And in Italy, all they care about is him putting the ball in the net and his attitude. They could care less in many, many parts of Italy about the color of his skin. And I think that is key. It is, and I, again, it's. I don't think it's. It's not a. It's not a majority of people who have this negative feeling towards and this 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 racist mentality. It's still just a small minority. But the fact that it still exists, I think clubs and FIFA they need to they need to make their punishments a lot harsher. You know, and that way that's going to force the clubs to take more action. It's going to hold the clubs more accountable. Um, and force them to really weed out this minority of fans that are still being able to, to influence um, what's going on in our culture, in our soccer culture. Absolutely. Maurice Adu of the Philadelphia Union joining us. Maurice, just a couple more minutes. We really appreciate your time. But I can't let you go without talking about the World Cup in Brazil. What a World Cup it was for Team USA. I've said this and I'll say it again and again. I believe within the next two World Cups, whether it's Russia or Qatar, I believe the USA will knock on the door in getting to a Final Four and possibly getting to a Final. I think that the development in the US of A has really taken off. What do you attribute that to? Yeah, I agree, and I think that comes down to a few things. I think it comes down to, you know, obviously our players that are overseas and abroad that are doing well, I think that helps. It strengthens the national team. And then also the fact that we have the MLS as a platform for, for players to continue to develop, for young players to, to make a name for themselves, homegrown players to come up through the academy systems that we have now. You know, it gets them playing soccer at a high level at a younger age, which naturally bodes well for the youth national teams, and that leads into how they progress into the full national team. So I think it's a combination of things. You know, obviously the MLS becoming a bigger league, players getting a chance to really um, make a name for themselves here, and that leads to success for the national team. And I agree with you. I think the soccer here in this country is definitely heading in the right direction, and I think we're starting to establish a mentality now of not just, not just being content with getting to a World Cup or getting out of the first round. I think now we're starting to raise our standard and our, and expect it, and our expectations of what we need to accomplish as a country. Um, we need to start going into tournaments now where we believe we have a chance to, to actually progress into the finals and win things. Maurice, uh, the other thing that I wanted to ask you, you spent a lot of time in Europe, and I'm sure that you got to see a lot of uh, youth training sessions with a lot of players uh, of a lot younger age than yourself. And then you can compare them to you growing up in the U.S. of A in different training sessions that you have. I, I look here in Canada, and I've spent a lot of time in the USA as well, that I still think we lack in creativity with the ball, whether it's the U.S. player, the Canadian player. I still think we lack a sort of a, a different mentality than the Europeans and the South Americans come uh, when it comes to sportsmanship. I'll be honest, the Europeans and South Americans, they know when to go down in certain situations. The Americans and Canadians, they're too proud to go down unless they're really taken down hard. How do we change these things? Yeah, I'm not sure if it's something that we necessarily need to change because, you know, I think different cultures just have different... I think because of your culture and how you grew up and the country you grew up, and that's just, that kind of dictates the kind of player you are sometimes and, and the way you go about things. So I'm not sure necessarily if we need to change um, our, our approach in terms of going down more often or, or um, things like that from that standpoint. Obviously, I think it's important to be cognizant of, of what's going on in the game, the time of the game, the, the circumstances of the game, and and be clever in certain ways, but I think that comes from experience. I think that comes from being in more situations like that and having to deal with the results if you don't approach it a certain way. So 
I don't know necessarily if it's, um, I think it's something that just comes from experience, you know, being able to adapt to certain situations when you're putting them more often. Maurice, who was influential in your life to get to where you're at as a professional player? I mean, so many young kids dream the dream that you're living right now and would love to play professional soccer, but there had to be people in your life to help get where you're at. Was it a, a, a parent? Was it a coach that believed in you? Who was it that said, you have something special, continue on? Um, to be honest, I would, you know, I think, of course, I'd have to say all my club coaches growing up, um, Sasha played a big role in that as well. Any coach that I've had, I think I've grown, I've learned something from them, whether it be on the pitch or off the pitch, but I think more, most importantly for me was, was and, and still is my family. Um, they're the ones that introduced me to this game at a young age, believed in me, um, kept me motivated through the ups and downs of my career, and at the same time kept me humble. You know, they've never let me get too big to, to where I think I'm somebody that I'm not or, or let me let any of this stuff, you know, whether it's the fame or, or the lifestyle, let any of that stuff affect who I am as a person. They try to keep me humble throughout my course of my career, and, and I owe a lot to them. Maurice, as we let you go, we always like to ask the players before they depart to talk to the kids out there, the young players, boys or girls, a lot of them love to play the game, and some of them really want to go on possibly to play in the NCAA or as a pro like yourself. But unfortunately, we, we both know that there's too many coaches out there that want to win that $2 trophy, that $2 medal, and win at all costs, and let you know a lot of the players sit on the bench for the majority of the game. And those players lose confidence, but those youngsters still want to have that dream. How do they go about believing that they could still reach their goal, even though sometimes you know they don't have that confidence from their coach? Yeah, it might sound cliche to say, but you know, I think these are words that I've I've lived by throughout the course of my career, and that's just you know, no one can stop you from doing something you believe in except yourself. Um, you know, your your path may be different than your teammate, may be different than the path that you dreamt of, of going down, you know, but at the end of the day, if you have a goal in mind and you really focus and set yourself and, and really dedicate yourself towards accomplishing that goal, anything is possible. So I, I just feel like even if your coach tells you you're not going to progress to, be a, to go on to be a pro, you're not going to go to college, or at this point in time, he isn't so that you're able to start for your team. If you continue to believe in yourself and continue to work and get better, um, that anything is possible. I know when I was growing up, I saw a lot of my club teammates turn professional at an earlier age than I did, and I was looking at them like, you know what, these are the guys I play with every day. I feel like I'm just as good as them, if not better. So why are they getting the opportunity and I'm not? And I just use that as my motivation to keep working hard and, and keep pursuing my dream. Maurice, outstanding. Outstanding of you to take the time out of your busy schedule to join us, to talk to the kids, to talk to our audience. God bless you. Have a wonderful 2015 season we wish you nothing but success and do me a favor say hi to Ray for me and Steven these are great teammates you got and hopefully for the great fans of Philly you can get into the playoffs this year my man thanks a lot man I appreciate that thanks for having me pleasure is all mine Marisa Du, first class guy and an outstanding player and he always does it with a smile